Today we're playing Empyrean, Galactic Survival. So this is going to be a game that's going to be very reminiscent of things like Ark and Space Engineers um, and even No Man's Sky. It has been in development for a long time. It's been in early access for like two years on Steam. So it's not like, you know, it's following in anyone's footsteps um, necessarily, but it's I like it a lot. It's still in early access, but it's got a fair amount of content. Um, and whereas Space Engineers has like a little bit more um, details in the building. Um, Empyrean has a lot more focus on sort of the survival side and things like that. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and load up on new game over here. Now, one of the interesting things about the game is they do have a ton of different scenarios that you can play in. You also have the ability to create your own sort of setup for the galaxy. Well, galaxy. Right now, galactic survival is a little bit of a misnomer because it's really just a solar system with many, many planets and space stations and things like that going on um, currently. Um, so you can make your own scenarios. A lot of things can be published. I don't know if the Steam Workshop supports the actually supports the scenario publishing yet, um, but a lot of things can be, and that's certainly their plan, which is lovely. Even in a particular scenario, like on the default scenario over here, uh, there's two planets to choose from. And then on some of these others, Dawn of the Galaxy, we've got three different places to start from. It's the same, like, the same solar system just completely different situations to start in the default multiplayer has got four different places you can start from um i think the default multiplayer might start with more planets or something I'm, I'm not sure what the difference between default and default multiplayer is we'll just play in default mode over here um you can call your game whatever you want live stream um game mode survival and creative creative you don't have to worry about food or being attacked or anything like that and you've got like unlimited resources to just build um so you get to like just be creative now what a lot of people do you can build you can build building sort of lego style here um for uh bases hover vehicles sort of fighter spaceships and giant like capital vessels like we're talking about like star destroyer type stuff um, and what you can do is when you build one of those, you can save it as a blueprint. So what some people will do is they will go into creative mode where they have unlimited building blocks and it's really easy to like remove a block and put it back in and, you know, just like keep messing around and they'll get a design that they like and save a blueprint for it in creative. And then when they go back into survival, I mean, they're going to have to go and collect all the resources for it and spend the time crafting it, but they've got sort of an established blueprint to follow. So... Uh, even if you're interested in playing just survival mode, there's value in like going into creative mode and, and maybe creating some stuff. You can do a seed. Let's do seed uh, 18, 18, 18 over here. Uh, that will get you. So this determines the the random generation on the planets, the, the shape of the land masses, as far as I know, um, the resource distribution, what uh, weird buildings might be present on your planet, that sort of thing. For difficulty over here, I'm playing on medium difficulty, except in the interest of accelerating things a little bit for the stream, I'm going to set the starting equipment to easy here. So we'll get, I think, a little bit more starting gear. Um, so that should speed things up just a scooch. But you can see about all the, like, very, very tunable here. By the way, if you talk to Paradox about getting an early copy of Surviving Mars to do a series on, uh, there will be... There will, there'll be some stuff for Surviving Mars. There will be some stuff there. Things I can't necessarily talk about, but... Surviving Mars, I, I suspect, will happen at some point sooner rather than later. So, yeah, we do have two starts here. Um, Omicron is definitely the harder start because it's a planet with no breathable atmosphere. So, you have to, like, start producing oxygen and stuff right from the start. Uh, Aku is a little easier, um, and it's also beautiful. It is so lovely. And I want to start on Akua over here because it's just gorgeous. It does have an atmosphere, so we don't have to, like, stress about generating oxygen right from the start. Um, but we do have to stress about plenty of other things. So we're going to go with that. And again, lots of other things. And, yeah, there's, it's all text files. You can, like, customize your planets and stuff in text files. It's kind of cool. Um, over here, you can just start a co-op server right here to launch a server and make it really easy for other people to connect to. You can also start um, uh, standalone dedicated servers. Uh, the game, even though, like, you get in here and it's like, wow, this is really gorgeous. And you're like, Hey, what was this made in? Unity? A Unity game looks this good? What the hell have I been doing wrong? Anyway, um, because of that, as far as I know, it runs on like Windows, Mac, Linux, including the dedicated server. You can set up a dedicated server on Linux or something like that, you know, somewhere on the, inter the internets. And play with your friends. It can be PvE, like co-op type stuff. It can be PvP where you shoot each other all the time. You can choose your thing. So anyway, I'm going to dive in over here and we'll get our start. Depending on what your start is, you will start in all kinds of different situations. One of the starts in one of the scenarios, you start in this gorgeous house that you look at like, man, people are good at making pretty things. But I like this start because it's very, uh, I don't know. 
I think the escape pod start is the way to go. <laughs> Any thought of referencing the Game Patterns book chapters to programming stream? It's an excellent idea, Alsa. I've, been, uh, I've just barely started to read it, but you know, it's a good idea is using that as like a guide for some sort of tutorial. So here's us. Um, we're coming in on a crash landing here. Uh, we've got a point of interest right away. It's apparently a large destroyed farm over there. I don't think I want to land right next to it. Landing rel- Oh no! Crashed Titan! The back part! And there's a drone over there. Okay, let's GTFO. There's the destroyed farm. Uh, we're gonna try to move a little further away. Okay, iron, promethium deposits, that's good. Silicon deposits, if we can get a copper deposit somewhere over here, I'll be quite pleased because we'll have all the starting minerals in place. Anyway, um, brace for impact. Brace for impact. Everything is fine. Is this a new PUBG update? Oh my god. You know, this format... What? I don't remember this pop-up. There was like... There were like three patches this week, though. Alright, uh... Did I like... Did I like turn on... Tutorial mode? Excellent. No, I'm interested in default mode. Huh, they've integrated the tutorial a little bit more, or I loaded it up differently. I don't know. Anyway, so this is us. This is the planet. Like, love the sunbeams. We've got, like, alien dinosaurs roaming around here. Yeah, that red blip, that's an enemy drone. Luckily, it's, we're well out of range here, but we have to be very careful going that direction. We've got a moon up there, which we will be able to fly to. Awesome. So we can open up the map, take a look at the planet over here. Um, I, I, uh, this, wow, this seed is weird. We don't have any true oceans. Like, we don't have continents. We have basically two big lakes. I mean, maybe this is big enough to be ocean, I guess. The planets in this game are relatively tiny. Like, you can, you can, you can cover the entire planet fairly easily. I mean, you can see, like, we came down. There's, like, the Titan over here. Um, there's the destroyed farm. So, they're, they're pretty far away on a globe, but not that far overland. So, yeah, I guess we got... Just, like, everything is these, like, these seas. Very little water on this planet, or okay. We had some polar ice caps over there. Um, the way... Now, if you guys watch my program tutorial about doing, like, planetary stuff in Unity, uh, these guys decided, you know what? All that, like, round planetary stuff is hard to do and hard to optimize. Eff it. Effectively, the way it's implemented here is it's just one flat terrain, and at some point, if you keep walking east or west, you'll actually see this big green barrier, which is at the seam of the planet, which sometimes you can sort of see. Oh, yeah, probably right here where that landmass is mirrored. Uh, there's like the seam of the planet that you get to, and then when you walk through it, effectively, it's like teleporting you to the other end of this flat terrain. So they're like, no, no, round stuff is bad for performance, so we just ignore it. Anyway, speaking of uh, things that are bad, let's start moving here. We're going to loot the escape pod, which is going to despawn in 14 minutes from now. We've got a med kit, some emergency rations, and some O2 bottles in there. And we've got a little bit of gear on ourselves over here. Let's go and equip uh, pistol, drill, chainsaw. We're going to put that on there. So we've got med kits, antidote pills, some pistol rounds, some wine, which is actually surprisingly good at healing you. Yeah, and then the rations. Some fuel packs, an ore scanner, which is really nice to start with. O2 bottles, biofuel, basically like petrol, um, and a survival constructor. So, we can uh, load up our pistol. Now, this thing is pretty weak sauce, so we really want to avoid some fights right now. We're going to fuel up the drill. It gets fueled with biofuel. Later on, we'll be able to get a second drill, which is much better, much faster, has longer range, and gets powered with our Promethean ore. And we got a chainsaw. Because this isn't Minecraft, we're not going to start by punching trees. God damn, this is a science fiction game. No, we're going to start by chainsawing trees. Now, this is particularly loud. Hopefully, the, vo the volumes are tuned. Now, the trees currently just despawn, which isn't particularly exciting. Uh, but wood wood, wood stuff is not very... Oh, shit. There's a bug coming at me. Oh, God. Die! Engage jetpack so that we can sort of kite backwards. Okay, there we go. So the pistol's got a maximum range of 69. And, oh, you know, I should move my head because I am blocking some of the toolbar. The pistol's got a maximum range of 69, and yet it's still not particularly accurate within that range. So it's super not an ideal weapon for us. We can loot the insect here. Hey, we get some raw meat. Groovy. 
So food is a thing in the bottom left corner of your screen. You can see my health, my food bar, my stamina, which uh, tends to go down when you run and then recharges when you're not running, and then oxygen. Oxygen will not be a problem on this planet because we can breathe the air. In fact, I can and should take off my helmet. There we go. There's me. There's me. There's Quillateen. You can customize your dude. You can customize the color, the face, the beard, gender, all that kind of jazz. So when I'm running around like this, I like to be in first person mode. So it accurately mirrors an actual pistol. Yeah, that's that's the thing that like pistols are super freaking inaccurate. And like movies and TV shows, people are like sniping people with a pistol to show how good they are. It doesn't matter how good you are. After a certain distance, you have like that that bullet is going to stray. All right. So getting food is going to be important. These um these uh, dinosaurs here are totally chill and neutral, and in fact, even if you shoot one, they just start to run away, which actually makes it quite hard to kill these guys with a pistol. Unless you go after the babies. It's sad, but we're probably going to have to do it. Still, let's start by doing some mining. Um, we did find... We still don't know where copper deposit is, which is too bad. But let's head south to the iron. That's going to be a good start. What is... Why is there a marker there? That's not me. Oh, it is me! Oh, my bad. I was thinking I'm here. Um, so yeah, let's head over towards the iron, and we're going to start doing some mining. Now, you can... Okay, th those aliens over here, these guys are... Oh, we've got some uh, berries we can pick here. Some Akua berries. Lovely, we can make more booze with that. These guys here are totally chill. These aliens, these primitive aliens with spears. Unless you hit one of them... Or if they are escorting uh, some dinosaurs, like they're sort of dinosaur herders, and if you shoot one of the uh, the dinosaurs they're herding, they will come and hurt you. <laughs> Cute dinosaurs, let's kill the babies. <sighs> it is a survival game, things are a little rough. Now, these little piles, I think that might be dinosaur poop. Like, you can technically mine them with the drill, um, with the stone removal tool, but I've never gotten anything out of them. I've always just imagined, oh shit, that's the mine. Okay, we've got a triceratops over there. Or not the mine, the, the destroyed farm. Now, if it's a destroyed farm, it's probably not being guarded, right? I found a copper deposit, which is great. Oh, I'm so scared. It's so easy to die. Look at all the cute little babies running around that we'll probably go and have to shoot later. So, the interesting thing about this structure is everything you see here, you can build yourself as a player. Now, if you want to get a cool little overview, you can hit F5, and it uh, releases a little drone for you. And you can sort of scoot around with that. It does have a maximum range. The nice thing about the drone is you can actually use it to build as well, which makes it a lot easier to get up and around things to build. Oh, this is a window. I can't go inside. I mean, it looks deserted. I'm sure this is fine. So, if we can get a little bit of extra starting loot here, that would be quite nice. And some toilets. Ah, cargo box. Oh, look at this! Ooh, a core... You know, if this is truly destroyed, can we actually just drop a core here? No, so it still has a core somewhere. All right. It's worth noting. So the way structures work in Empyrean is there is always a core block in a structure to make that structure sort of like count as something. That's just a decorative plant. Um, and you can actually take over buildings. Oh my god, how bad is this pistol? It's like that hard to like shoot through a window. Um, you can take over buildings if you find their core and destroy it, and you can just drop in your own core. See this this is a um, this is a fertile block you can grow in. Oh, we got a switch on the wall. Probably doesn't do anything. I mean it's not powered up. The core on this should be a block that's sort of glowing red. But it could be anywhere. If we could blow it up, we could take over the structure now. We probably want to go and build our own structure from the start. But what it would allow us to do is then um, disassemble this bad boy. Really not much in the way of lootables over here. Solar capacitor, see? Taking all that stuff would be fantastic starting loot for us. Solar panel, again, like, even if we don't build it here, if we've got control of the building, we can disassemble it as opposed to just destroying it. But I don't see a red glowing block. I don't really have the tools to, like, go and, like, shoot at these blocks. 
and like try to expose the core wherever it is. Oh, is this a um, an elevator block? Nice. Whoops. Okay, I think we'll come back here. I think we'll come back here. Uh, so let's go and get our iron. Iron, copper, silicon is great. Uh, we are leaving the Promethean behind, but that's okay. We don't need to rush the Promethean. Whereas we do want resources to be able to build some stuff. Hello, Trike. These guys have a fair amount of hit points. They really like to gore you to death. So uh, it could probably kill one with the pistol by like kiting backwards a lot and using the jetpack. So you get like your regular jump, which is just this. And then you got a jetpack. You see the icon in the bottom left corner. It drains pretty quickly. You get some more height and then it takes a second to reload. But it helps you mostly get out of holes that you dig yourself in when you're mining. So let's go and mine. Gore, gore, gore. Oh, you're getting motion sickness. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. So, there's an ore deposit over here. It's below ground. If we switch to our drill, because we have a ore scanner here, we can actually see the glowing bits of the minerals down here. So, what I can do is switch to resource mining mode and actually start drilling into the ground. And all the terrain is deformable. Now, the mining's not particularly exciting for stream content, but I'm sure we're going to be okay. <laughs> Three horns don't talk to long necks. So yeah, so like, digging a hole. We're going to mine deeply and greedily. Now, the outline gets thicker as you get closer here, so we should be able to get this chunk of ore really fast. Later on, you do get the ability to, uh, you can mine with your drone? Really? Hold on, I gotta jump out of here. Can I seriously mine with the drone? That would be... Shit. These little spider creatures will often... Yeah, he's coming. Ah! Oh, he actually hit me? I was trying to, like, jump backwards to get away from him. We should do that. Eat that. And I actually could use some food already. So I'm gonna drop down. You do spawn with a survival constructor. The survival constructor is slow. It's also not very smart in that, like, let's say you want to build a computer and it needs electronic parts. The other constructors will auto-build the electronic parts for you first. The uh, survival constructor doesn't. You have to construct everything manually. So it's slow, but it does get you started off. I'm going to make a steak and a couple of salamis over here. I know I, like, shift-click to, like, queue up ten, but it'll just do two. And so, because we need some food, the steaks will give us 100 food, so I'm going to nom that one, fill myself up. You get a little bit of health as well from eating. So we can leave that onto the surface. So can I mine with my drone? Well. Oh my! Oh, that's so much easier so you don't get stuck. I mean, a drone does swivel a little fast, but there you go. So we've exposed a little bit of the iron here. Oh my god, it really swivels. There we go. That was 127 iron ore. It also gives me a lot of XP when I do this. Okay, the fact that you can mine with your drone makes it so much better because you don't have to worry about getting stuck in a goddamn hole as easily. Drill, 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 drill. And yes, food does spoil. Um, most things will have a perishable timer. Now, the interesting thing about food that spoils is it's still useful because you can use spoiled food as a source of biofuel. I guess it starts to, like, I don't know, spell methane or something like that. It's all hydrocarbons. So why not? And a key rigs came in eight quill. It's entirely possible that I will get attacked while I'm busy mining here with my drone. I'm just gonna get another chunk of iron. There we go, right there. Excellent. So we have tons of iron. We also get a lot of crushed stone from doing this. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my constructor. Oh, it doesn't loot the contents. It puts it in a drop container. Things in a drop container like that would have lasted 15 minutes, but once it's empty, it despawns in 30. Sort of a like multiplayer server friendly like self cleanup. So we got some iron. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run over to the copper... Well, actually, it's silicon because it's closer. Silicon, not silicone. Silicon makes computers. Silicone makes things bigger. I don't know. You can use it for, like, ceiling bathrooms. There we go. Um, oh, we got some more Akua berries. Oh, more here, too. Nice. I look for those purple trees. And you get XP. Look at that. 100 XP for looting some berries. Uh, killing an enemy would get you, like, about 500 XP. Uh... Hunting is a great way to level up, but um, everything you do is. Like, mining gets you XP, uh, crafting, farming, like, tons of things give you XP. I'm going to go ahead and drop the iron ore in here. So, we collected 200 iron ore, which is pretty good, and then um, 
Every five iron ore gives you ten iron bars. So we've got tons of iron bars available here. So I'm just going to turn this on and get it to start smelting the iron ore while I deal with mining out some copper here. So I'll start a little hole myself. So it's a little less squiggly. Oh, my head blocks the XP notification. Oh. Let's put ourselves over here then. Hopefully that'll be okay. All right, let me jump out here. Hey, Cobra leaves. An alien plasma ZR1. Little mushroom. Cool. And yeah, mine this out. Oh, this is so good. Thank you for pointing out that you could mine with the goddamn drone. Because you have to be really careful with the mining. It's kind of easy to go and like dig a hole that's too deep that you can't jump out of properly. Um, so then you're like stuck sort of like hopping up and trying to like dig out a side tunnel while like hop side, hop side, so you get a little step that, that forms up. So this initial mining drill doesn't mine that fast and only has a, a range of two meters, which you can see there, that side. Everything's mirrored here, so it's a little weird. That side over there. So you have to basically have your face right into the rocks to do it. Um, but the later one has like a range of seven, mines faster, it's got a couple extra little modes, I think. Um... Oh, the, the ammo is the ammo here for the drill. Um, the Slash 13, that's how many reloads I've got. Basically, those are containers of biofuel. Um, so I can reload it that many times. The drone itself doesn't have any fuel, but it has a maximum range. It cannot go very far from me. I did not necessarily start the hole in the ideal place, but that's okay. So yeah, we'll mine out a couple of chunks of this, which should be more than enough to get us started with our base building. We'll go and mine out a couple of chunks of copper, which will be enough for that. And we might want to go and mine out a couple of chunks of promethium ore as well, um, which is used for fueling the base. I think you can mine with both right and left click. Well, no, right click uh, opens up this tooltip. Yeah, the things have changed a fair bit. Harvest dino, dino babies for fuel. And I mean, we can. We can make biofuel out of their meat. It is really weird when you, like, kill a giant vampire. Or, vampire. Giant dinosaur, and you get, like, two chunks of meat out of it. And you're like, wow, I am really not a good butcher. Oh, reloading. There we go. We should. We've got a couple of chunks here that are going to be available. There's one chunk. And another chunk of silicone is going to be available there. There we go. That's, uh, we're only at about 100. So let's mine a little bit more. That was only 10. Wow. These are not quite as rich as the um, those iron chunks. We might not need quite as much, but let's go ahead and mine a little bit. We'll try to get like a couple of hundred ore of each type of ore. I mean, meanwhile, the, the iron's still being smelted. So, you know, we're multitasking here. My cooking skill must be zero. Yeah. There we go. Another chunk here. That was 51. So yeah, let me just get one more chunk here. Well, we might mine these two because they're quite close together. Just get up to 200. I, we might not need that much. Silicon is used for a lot of the electronic components, um, for fiber optic cable, um, as well as glass. There we go. Okay, that's pretty good. And then, yeah, I don't have to worry about walking out of the hole. Oh, this is lovely. Because, yeah, that's look, look at the hole that we dug out here. I mean, I could get in and out of that. But I like it. It's like... The terrain, like, you can you can build underground bases, by the way. If you're willing to put in the time to mine, you can build your base underground. Which is pretty kick-ass. Alright, so you can see we've got some iron ingots that are being made here. That's great. I'm going to pick up the survival constructor, and it just dumps its contents in the box, which I will then loot. And so now we're going to run over to the copper over here. Now, there are these surface stones as well. And if you go to stone removal mode, you can go and pop them. Some of them have resources. Maybe about 50-50, I feel. There we go. This one had crushed stone, iron ore, and gives me a little bit of XP. We'll talk about why the XP is important in a scooch. You get XP from exploring as well, just like finding resource nodes, finding old buildings, all that kind of stuff. There we go. We've got some silicon ore and iron ore out of that. How lovely. Um, I'm going to grab these plants here too. Like exploring, harvesting, farming, hunting, everything gives you XP. Just do stuff and it'll give you experience points. So we're gonna get kind of close to there. I'm gonna drop the survival constructor again. I'm gonna drop in the silicon ore and the iron ore. I'm just gonna control click here to just queue up more than we actually have. Turn you on. Start smelting silicon. Excellent. Mining drill, robot. And we'll try to get right on top of these chunks. Okay, this, 
these copper deposits look deeper than the others. Is it just me? It feels like they're a little deeper. Oh, I have to go back to resource mining mode. Uh, is there structural failure? Yes, there is. Um, when you construct things, uh, you can actually go to a structural integrity mode. And, wow, when you're facing straight down, it really likes to get gimbal locked and start swiveling. Um, and things can fall apart from gravity. Yes, I have heard of Space Engineers. I never played it much, um, and it's similar-ish to this. There's definitely some overlap. This has got more survival elements built in from the start. A little bit more, like, sort of questicle kind of things. Wait a minute. Dinosaurs and tree from our time age. Well, we're on an alien planet, so they're not they're not dinosaurs. They're alien creatures that sort of look dinosaur-y. A wizard did it! Wow, yeah, this is, um... This this is a sucky copper mine, it feels like. 